How are you? I, I'm not sitting here about it, am I? You are. Oh, That's the difference you between me and you. You're a baby. Oh, you got this going? You got this going? Oh, really? I just couldn't take the idea of more physical abuse. But I did not punch you. I did not deck you. We're going to be talking about the dark history between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. As you guys know, Johnny Depp is a huge actor who's been featured in plenty of movies, but he's definitely best known as his role as Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean films. Once upon a time, he was married to an actress named Amber Heard. She has been featured in films like Zombieland, Aquaman, and The Rum Diary, which is where we begin our story, because Johnny Depp and Amber Heard met on the set of that movie. I love this car. Did he give it to you? <laughs> I wish. But before we get into their relationship, I want to talk about a relationship that Amber was in before she met Johnny. Amber was with a woman named Tessa Van Rie. She actually got arrested for striking Tessa back in 2009. Even though Amber is arrested, she and her partner at the time tried to backtrack everything because Tessa doesn't want Amber to get in trouble for striking her. Tessa and her team put out this statement that in 2009, Amber was wrongfully accused for an incident. The reason why they put this statement out in the first place was bizarre because it was 2016 once this information came to light. Actually, Teza goes as far as to say that there was some misogynistic and homophobic energy when the police came to arrest Amber. So they're trying to write it off as the police, you know, didn't like that they were lesbians. That would have been a convenient outing for Amber, but that's a huge claim. And people actually dug up information about this officer and they were offended by this statement. Statement. It turns out the officer who arrested Amber, Officer Beverly Leonard, is part of the LGBT community herself. So um, that didn't fly. The officer even went and did press to defend their name and called out Amber Heard for making such a statement, or I guess Tesa for making this statement. I'm assuming that Amber had some part in this, but it's just, it's a messy situation. But legally, this was a serious situation. And actually, Tesa could have pressed charges for the next two years after Amber was released. The state is declining to file charges at this time. Okay, what that means, ma'am, is no charges will be filed against you today. However, that could happen in the future. Therefore, we want to make sure we have your correct address. So there's an example of Amber getting physical with her partner back in 2009. And like I mentioned earlier, both Johnny and Amber met each other in 2009 on the set of The Rum Diary. At this point, Johnny was 48 years old and Amber was 25. Johnny was in a long-term relationship with a woman named Vanessa. And at this point, they had been together for over 10 years. In the year 2011, there are rumors that Johnny and Amber are getting romantic. And then in June of 2012, Johnny announces that he and Vanessa had split up. After that breakup, Johnny and Amber's relationship starts picking up very quickly. And Johnny actually buys her a horse because he wants to spend quality time with Amber. And if he had a horse for her to tend to, they could spend time together. I want to acknowledge before we get into the allegations that Johnny and Amber's relationship is toxic and it is hard to talk about about. Back in 2013, it seemed like Johnny was doing all right. He did an article with the Rolling Stone, and in this article, he opened up about his issues with pain medication and alcohol, but at this point, he claimed to be sober, and he had been sober for about a year and a half. So it seems like Johnny was doing great. But of course, there are a ton of allegations in this case, in these lawsuits, in this relationship. So let's go ahead and talk about the first one. The first incident happens in March 2013, where Amber accuses Johnny of slapping her three times. Johnny denies this happening, but Amber claims that they were talking about a wino tattoo that Johnny has, and I guess Johnny said something, and Amber laughed, according to Amber, and then Johnny 
slapped Amber across the face. And at this point, she claimed that she had never had another man other than her dad hit her before. And she was just staring at Johnny in shock. We're sitting next to each other on the couch. And I asked him about the tattoo he has on his arm. And I said, what, is it, what does it say? And he um, said, it says, why no? It says, why no? And I, um, I didn't see that. I thought he was joking. Uh, because it didn't look like it said that at all. And I laughed. It was that simple. Um, I, I just laughed because I thought he was joking. And slapped me across the face. I just stared at him. Kind of laughing still. Thinking that he was going to start laughing too to tell me it was a joke. But he didn't. And I really slowly... I stood up and I remember looking at him in the eye and just looking at him, frankly, because I didn't know what else to do. And before I know it, he starts crying. And, you know, like, I, I had never seen an adult man cry. Um, I didn't even really see my dad cry at my grandma's funeral. You know, it's just, it's weird. Why would I take such great offense to someone making fun of a, a, a tattoo uh, on my body. It, uh, it, it that, 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 that allegation never made any sense to me whatsoever. Are there any tattoos that you had that Miss Heard had an issue with, to your understanding? Um, well, the, the um, what a, a tattoo that I believe is up here, uh, which used to say uh, Winona forever, who was a former girlfriend. And um, we'd been together for a few years, um, Winona Ryder. And uh, when, we, when, when we broke up, um, how do you fix that? <laughs> I did go back and re rewrite my journal to some degree. I, I took off the last two letters. Um, and had it say wino forever. Johnny Depp has clearly struggled with substance issues. And at this point, it seemed that he broken his sobriety and something that, you know, Amber said or the conversation did offend him at this point. He acknowledges that he was disappointed that he had broken his sobriety after 160 days, but he says he did not touch Amber. He never slapped her. It's complete nonsense. It's untrue, according to Johnny. In that same month, March 2013, we move on to our second allegation. Amber claims on March 8th, 2013, in her home in LA, Johnny had gotten physical with her. He even tried to burn a painting that she had hung up. She claims that he hit her so hard that there was blood on the wall that came from her lip. There was a lot of rings. Uh, I remember kind of just feeling like that my lip went into my teeth and uh, it got a little blood on the wall. It, just that simple, a little bit of blood on the wall. As hard as it is, as hard as it is to explain this, I, I was so caught up in the relationship and also very occupied in defending what I only as could assume he believed, these accusations. This fight that Johnny and Amber had would be later referred to as the disco bloodbath in court. That's because Johnny texts Amber about a book title called Disco Bloodbath, and I guess she jokingly replies about their fight they had last Friday and at this point he kind of goes off on her and says you know you're a funny b word I effing love you I was in a bookstore um, a, a, a used bookstore or a, a um, bookstore that had a lot of first editions and things like that which was sort of a passion and I saw a book called Disco Bloodbath I thought it was a funny title Disco Bloodbath um, it sounded like a, a sort of a bad slasher movie to me. So I said, just thought you should know that there exists a book titled Disco Bloodbath. That's all. And then she asked me, is, is it about last Friday night by any chance? My answer uh, to her, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? This, this is a lighthearted exchange. Then she makes a reference to last Friday. I, I don't recall what last Friday night was or whatever, so I just, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? I, I, a hideous moment could have been some 
grotesque thing that we saw on television. It could have been anything. I, I don't recall now, but... There's a ton of snickering and sarcasm in their relationship, which sometimes works for people. But in their relationship, it seemed like they were always fighting about something. Because Amber did provide a date of this incident, people have found photos from that time. And I guess Amber had claimed that this photo right here hides some of her injuries because she's got her hair covering her neck. Some people have tried to debate this because there's another photo of Amber with her neck showing and I guess there's no visible markings there. Amber was confronted about the lack of injuries and they actually ended up switching the dates of when this incident went down, which I could have some sympathy for because I understand that when you go through traumatic experiences, you um, can forget when this exactly happened, but there are some questionable moments. So like I said, Amber switched the date from March 8th to March 22nd, which is a pretty big jump, but she actually used photographs that she took of some of the substances that Johnny was using at this point, and that allowed her to figure out when this went down. This whole fight started because Amber claims that Johnny accused her of having an affair with her ex, Taza, the one that she allegedly got physical with back in 2009. Here are some of the photos that Amber submitted to the court from this date, and as you can see in the bottom left, there is a little screenshot of when these photos were taken. What's bizarre about these photos is that you can see there are a bunch of different items placed on this table and between the two photos there are some changes. There are some drugs that appear, there's a box that was in the previous photo. So some people question why these photos were taken and why these items were placed so strategically. Amber also submitted a text message screenshot to her mother where she talks about Johnny and dealing with his spiral and going on and on about how their relationship is detrimental. She did note in one text message that Johnny did not hit her or anything last night. She claims that she is physically okay, which seems to be a little contradicting. And there's also a photo of her from the following day, March 23rd, and people claim that you can't see the injuries that were described. Amber had claimed that Johnny had given her a split lip and a swollen face, and at least in that photo from March 23rd, 2013, you can't really see any of those injuries. But again, like, I'm just putting out every, this whole video is everything that I've found online. There are a bunch of sources listed below that I have pulled from. Definitely go and check them out. Go and follow them. They are great sources. It's taken me a long time to make this video. That's why it's um, kind of taken some time because there's a lot to this story. So I'm really just trying to put everything out there and then I can give you guys maybe my personal opinion at the end. The next incident takes place in June 2013 in Hicksville, California. They all went to travel there for Johnny's birthday and during his birthday bash, there was a moment where Johnny supposedly became really upset with one of Amber's friends hitting on Amber. So one of Amber's friends has their hand on Amber and Johnny supposedly took the hand from that friend and took it off Amber and said that he will break their hand. But she kind of threw up her hands and Johnny grabbed her, her wrist and kind of twisted it and pulled her into him and said, do you know how many pounds of pressure it takes to break a human wrist? Huh? And he kind of held her and she just, she just looked frozen. And uh, she's crying and she was just denying, understanding what was going on. I stepped in, I kind of take Johnny's arm around him, take Johnny's hand and kind of, we start communicating. I don't remember if he immediately was accusing me or if it was sometime after, I wish I remembered, but we, we agreed that we'd go and talk about it in the trailer. He also referred to Amber as a lesbian camp counselor, which is something I've heard thrown around in some of the recent court hearings. Amber did have a witness appear in court to tell their side of what 
they heard, and her name is Christy Sexton. She claims that she did see Johnny using a bunch of different substances and drinking, and at one point she did hear a fight, but then she heard security get involved and it seemed like everything calmed down. Christy was actually sober during this trip because she just had surgery and she woke up early the next morning and she was speaking to some of their friends and they did all confirm that this outburst did go down. Amber claims that the trailer that they were staying in was trashed and there was glass and just everything everywhere. And it seems like that is true. The trailer was in fact trashed and this person, this witness Christy, um, went in there and saw it all for herself. Let's tell the jury about Hicksville, May 2013. Can you tell the jury what transpired at Hicksville? Uh, it is a, it's a, like a fancy um, trailer park. He just started smashing things. Um, he picked up something on the table and threw it right into the glass cabinet. Um, he hit with his hand um, a, a wall sconce. Um, he cleared the tabletop on the little fold down um, like kitchen dining room area in this trailer. I mean, it's a trailer. So there's only so much you can do. There's no doubt in my mind that the trailer was an absolute wreck, but Amber is claiming that she was physically harmed and essayed during this incident, which are pretty serious claims. And these were actually debated in court in the UK because the Sun wrote that nasty article about Johnny Depp and they went to court about it. We'll talk a little bit about the Sun and that lawsuit later on in this video. But the judge ultimately ruled against Amber's, like, I guess, statement or accounting of the situation. The judge did not accept the allegation from Miss Heard in relation to this incident that Johnny had essayed her. Amber did share text messages in court that are supposedly related to this incident. And as you guys can see, it doesn't look like Johnny wants to speak to Amber. He's repeatedly asking her over and over again to leave him be, to leave him alone. It doesn't look like she's replying to him. I'm not sure if these messages were altered or maybe she was calling him, but he did bring up the camp counselor comment. So it does seem like these coincide. Johnny has spoken on this matter in court and he's denying some parts of it. When asked about this night, Johnny claims that he did remove Kelly's hand from Amber, but he didn't threaten her or do anything like that. He also claims he never called her a lesbian camp counselor, but you guys just saw that text message and then he went back and said, okay, I never called her this. I just texted it before. Um, question, and how did you deal with that uncomfortable situation? Answer, I removed Miss Kelly Sue's hand from Miss Heard's body, and I told her, do not do that. That, first of all, that is my girl. Second of all, it is rude and invasive. She was quite glassy-eyed, and she seemed pretty unsure of her surroundings. She seemed very unstable on her feet, and I remember saying to her, if you were going to take this drug, MDMA, you should know if you were able to handle it or not, correct? Did I read that right? That's correct. And after this uh, incident, you went back into the trailer that you and Miss Heard were, were sharing, and you had a big argument, right? There w yes, there was an argument. And the argument started about Kelly Sue, correct? I don't Amber was unhappy with your reaction to her and what happened, correct? Objection calls for speculation. I, 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 I'll sustain the objection, and you, you could rephrase. You had an argument with Miss Heard, and you understood her to be upset with the way that you had handled um, that situation with Kelly Sue, correct? I, I mean, I recall that that was a, a, a part of the argument, but um, as I had told Miss Heard, I was sorry if this, I mean, I was protecting Miss Heard's um, honor, and I was protecting my girl. Even though there's a ton of turmoil in their relationship, they ended up getting engaged in January 2014. Amber is spotted out and about wearing a massive ring, and it appears that they are now engaged to get married. Shortly after their engagement, another allegation comes forward. And at this point, Amber claims that Johnny got physical on a plane that they were flying from Boston to Los Angeles. And I pull my gaze away from him. I walk away from him. My back is turned to him, and I feel this boot in my back. He just kicked me in the back. 
I fell to the floor. I caught myself on the floor and I just felt like I was looking at the floor of the plane for a, felt like a long time. And I, I, didn't, I, I thought to myself, I don't know what to do. I can't believe he just, did he just kick me? No one said anything. No one did anything. It was like you could, he, you could hear a pin drop on that plane. You could feel the tension, but no one did anything. So they're riding in this private plane and supposedly Johnny gets upset with Amber because she had to do an intimate scene with James Franco for a project she was working on. She claims that she was moving between the seats and he kicked one of the chairs so that it would swivel around and hurt her because he was just aggravated with this scene she did with James. At one point, she got up to move somewhere else on the plane away from him, and he said, are you effing moving away from me, according to Amber, and kicked her in the back, and she fell to her hands and knees. She claims at this point, he kept verbally harming her until they got off the plane. I've never been on a private plane or a jet or anything, but I have seen this picture posted online and people are saying that like, mm, those chairs don't swivel. I mean, again, I don't know how different each plane could be. So I just want to throw that out there just because I've seen this posted online. But again, like who knows what the plane looked like. Amber has a pretty good case when it comes to this allegation. Well, so it seems because she has a text message exchange between herself and Johnny's assistant named Steven, and he brings up this kick that Johnny did. Now, I'm not trying to doubt her accounting right away, but you can see there are text messages between Amber and Steven, and Steven claims that Johnny cried when uh, he informed Johnny that he supposedly kicked Amber. But there are recordings that have come out, which I'm so surprised there are so many recordings in this case. Like, they both recorded each other, I guess, so often. But anyways, they talk about this Boston flight and the incident. And Amber talks about Johnny kicking her. And he says, I didn't kick you. And she says, I know. You guys are going to have to listen pretty closely. But it's something that, like, is briefly said towards the end of this audio clip. But, but Toronto was like... the the plane that that the plane when you kicked me it was so bad and so wait, unprovoked wait sorry the plane when i kicked you I can't just reference it like with the plane that i kicked you you know what i'm talking about right like the one from a long time ago it's on the tape recorder if you're gonna say that i kicked you you'll say everything else you did on the plane that I'm talking about is the plane from Boston. I did nothing to you. I mean, everyone can attest. Everyone will back back it up. I did nothing to you that time. You were just, you were f***ed up. The real fight. I'm talking about the long time ago. That was the only time in my relationship with you. Remember, I went back to New York. That I, I felt so unsure about us. It was after Toronto, and I sat on that all week and cried every f day. It was after Toronto when? This Toronto? I didn't kick you on the plane. I know, I said that was the only other time in our relationship oh, okay. that it felt like this. Maybe they were just both speaking so quickly that they were just trying to like, I don't know, that the words just kind of scrambled together. But there's another audio recording where Amber talks about getting agitated with Johnny and she describes, you know, like poking the bear. And she described this like act of him annoying her as like him kicking her, kick, 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 which is figurative. So she's speaking about being kicked by Johnny, but in, in like context, she means like being annoyed or being egged on. Actions last night, I feel very bad. No, I'm talking in Toronto. I, I did not start screaming until you had said all this shit you poke an animal enough it is eventually it doesn't matter how friendly it is that's or how not cool. true well I it's the same for, for me so long, it's the same for and you me kicked and kicked and kicked so bad. i have not done this to you i have not said these things to you yeah. i have not started the fight by saying then i'm gonna get in another room and i'm not gonna sit here and fight about toronto anymore guess what i let it go i'm not about i'm not talking about toronto so did Johnny Depp actually kick Amber or are they speaking figuratively? I mean, it, the text messages from the assistant would suggest that he actually did, which it just doesn't really make sense. But let's go ahead and move on to our next allegation, the next incident that went down in August 2014.
When did you start the detox process that you mentioned? It was in August, July or August of uh, 2015, 14, I cannot remember the year, 14, I guess. And where, were, where did you do this detox process? Um, uh, we, we, we did the, we, 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 the detox process, uh, um, happened on, I have a, a place in the Bahamas. Um, I'm never comfortable saying this, but it, it's an island. <laughs> it's a very strange thing to say. Um, but I thought that that would be the best place, the most private um, place where there were no um, worries of um, paparazzi or any of that. When Johnny was with Amber, he was clearly using, and we learned that during his birthday bash, but he didn't want to use anymore, and he wanted to detox from everything, so he went to his own private island to detox and to get clean. On August 17th, Amber accuses Johnny of supposedly grabbing her hair, slapping her, throwing her to the ground. And Johnny's behavior got worse and worse, more... Uh, of this passing out, nodding off, waking up in the middle of the night, screaming, waking up in the middle of the night, sometimes crying, and the emotions would change from one to the next, like by the, by the second. He was in such a rage that he smashed a door so hard that it splintered. It was so bad at this point that a doctor, Dr. Kipper, had to be flown out to the island. This doctor actually ended up testifying in court because honestly, everyone's been brought into court and they claimed that Amber did not seek any help or treatment for the injuries from this incident that went down. And the doctor was asked if he witnessed any injuries on Amber, would he reported this? And he claims, Yes, he would have. But Johnny claims while Amber was on the island, she was actually withholding his medication from him, medication to help him get over his, I guess, withdrawal from the drugs. And he claims he did not ever get physical with Amber or attack her because he was in a really bad condition at this point. Like he couldn't get up and fight somebody. He's withdrawing. Johnny did send a text message to Amber's mother, who's named Paige. And he did claim that Amber did help him out at this point to recover. So it's interesting because Johnny's claiming that Amber was so irritable at this time and he had to constantly calm her down. But at the same time, he's kind of like, you know, boasting her up to her own mother. Obviously, now Johnny claims that this trip was a trip from hell and it was really difficult to recover with Amber because she was holding back his drugs and supposedly a nurse did take notes that it wasn't great for Johnny to be around Amber at this point. These are notes from a nurse. After processing his feelings and realizing how far he had come and that part of his wanting to give up was due to tension between him and his fiance, the patient um, and the fiance and the nurse all came up with a plan for the fiance to take a few days for herself and the patient was willing to continue treatment. Wow. So he, he was like really struggling with Amber to be there and like they had to all like make a plan together to separate them. That's not a good sign. There is someone who works on Johnny's Island for him and they testified that they had actually seen Amber get physical with Johnny before, which isn't a good look for Amber. This employee Tara claims that she saw Amber lunge at Johnny tugging him, aggressively pulling him. During this incident, she never saw Johnny hit Amber. He kept asking her to leave him alone. She, Tara, at one point stepped between them to try to fix what was going on. This employee, Tara, provided a lot of stories about Amber and claims that she never saw any injuries and really just saw disaster, total mess, constant fighting. It was toxic. Now let's move on to the next allegation, which takes place in January 2015. All right, January 25, 2015, Tokyo. Please tell, it's uh, the premiere of uh, Morde Mordecai, correct? Did you accompany Mr. Depp to Tokyo for the premiere of Mordecai? I, I did. Um, when I was 
Please tell the jury about that trip. Amber claims that Johnny got physical with her. He slapped her, grabbed her by the hair, and knelt on her back in their Tokyo hotel room. Johnny denies all of this. He claims that this couldn't have gone down, and his kids were right next door in the next hotel room. They would have heard something. So Johnny was in Tokyo because he had done a film and he was there to promote it, and she claims she came into the hotel room and Johnny was visibly upset. He immediately went into a rage and started attacking her, slapping her, and pushing her to the floor while she was crying out loud. And, um, by the time I made it into the closet, uh, he had me by the hair and um, what felt like he was just wailing on me, but in a really sloppy way, like hitting the back of my head and kind of wrestled me down to the floor. I, I mean, it felt to me like I didn't even have a fair shot because I wasn't even really, I wasn't facing him or looking at him. I was walking away from him um, or else, you know, I, I, I would have at this point even like had it, I would have tried to defend myself more, but I, I, I didn't, I, I kind of felt like it didn't see it coming and he just wrestled me down to the ground. And I remember uh, he was screaming at me. I mean, like really screaming loud. Uh, and what I remember of that is trying to get up and him kind of wrestling me back down and at one point put his knee on my back. It's kind of like kneeling on my back. And I just had this like struggle with him. And I look at him and he's still got his glasses on. I just remember looking at him and thinking that was so, I mean, he just looked like he hadn't been through anything. You know, he still had his glasses on sunglasses. Supposedly this fight started because Johnny asked Amber for a prenup for their marriage and she did not want to sign one. That fight resulted in Johnny allegedly kneeling on Amber's back in this fight in their hotel room. So are we sure about this incident in the hotel room? Because there was a fight on the plane to Japan and some people think that maybe, I don't know, that this is the incident that ultimately went down. So this story actually comes from an email chain between doctors speaking about the situation. Supposedly they were on this flight to Tokyo and Amber again did not want to sign a prenup. They started arguing and at one point Amber tried to attempt to leave the plane while they were over the ocean. And because they were in Tokyo for a movie premiere, of course Johnny and Amber walked the red carpet together. And a lot of people point out that you cannot see any visible injuries here. Not all injuries are visible, I understand that. And supposedly he had gotten, you know, on her back, he had grabbed her neck. You cannot see any of that in these photos, but sometimes not all injuries are ultimately visible. I'm just throwing that out there. But I do question if this allegation just serves as kind of like filler allegations to just kind of make it seem like a, a longer list. The reason I say this is because we can't get the date down. Like if you look at Amber's accounting, she claims on January 25th, this went down. He got physical with her in their hotel room in Tokyo. I understand again that some people, they forget when these traumatic experiences went down. I mean, they're traumatic experiences you kind of block them sometimes but if you're going to put together an entire like you know document to present to the courtroom you probably should make sure that the dates you have are correct and if you have supporting evidence like it should be easy to figure that out but a month later in february 2015 they ended up getting married they had a private ceremony in los angeles and then they had a bigger wedding on johnny depp's island in the bahamas then moving on to march 2015 we get to one of the most severe allegations amber has made against johnny
So Johnny and Amber took a trip to Australia, and during this trip, they had an explosive fight. It does seem like the fight started around the prenup. I mean, at this point, Amber claims that she was ready to sign it, but they were still fighting about the principle of a prenup. Amber claims that this situation led to a hostage situation where she was held hostage by Johnny Depp for three days in Australia. She claims that Johnny was taking a bunch of ecstasy and drinking alcohol that he physically harmed her and that she feared for her life but of course johnny has a completely different story amber claims that she was in a remote destination 20 minutes away from help he was in a psychosis at this point they got physical he grabbed her threw her against the fridge at some point grabbing slapping all the most horrible things in one. So this hostage situation went down on March 6th and lasted through March 8th. And that sounds like a really horrible situation. I mean, you are trapped in this room with someone who's suffering mentally. Um, there's a lot of violence, a lot of drugs. I mean, it sounds horrific. And the word hostage alone, like you're hostage, you're like, that's like, you know, being a hostage somewhere, it's one of the worst things that can ever happen to someone. And I'm not trying to discount that maybe Amber felt trapped in Australia. Who really knows? But I feel like if you're a hostage, you wouldn't have access to a phone, a working phone where you could call anyone. And that's something that Johnny's lawyer asked Amber about. And I think that's a valid point. Like, you can't really use the word hostage if you didn't try everything in your power to get away. There is a note from Steven, who was Johnny's assistant at this point, and he did acknowledge that they were fighting. And there is a note from a doctor from March 7th where they acknowledge that Amber is experiencing increased anxiety. But if you saw a doctor and a nurse and everyone, I mean... If you really needed help at this point and you were a hostage, wouldn't you get the help and get out of there? And really, if there was a nurse who was present at this point, wouldn't they take note of, I guess, the injuries or the aftermath of this constant fighting? I mean, Amber is claiming that Johnny threw her against the fridge and told her that he could crush her neck. He hit and slapped her, pulled her by the hair. This is everything that Amber is alleging went down. She was packing a bag at one point to leave. He supposedly came over, pushed her over, and spit on her. Constant fighting. If you want to pause and read, they just were fighting nonstop. Amber claims that she was running around in the home in a nightgown, and there was glass everywhere, all over the kitchen floor, just a complete war zone. Here's a little excerpt. So glass was broken everywhere on the floor, on the countertop. At some point, he pulled me around the neck and pushed me down against the bar. I was against the bar, naked, bent over backwards, my back against the marble. He was pressing so hard on my neck, I couldn't breathe. I was trying to tell him I couldn't breathe, and I remember thinking he was going to take my life. At one point during the fight, Amber claims that she escaped to the bathroom to try to fall asleep. She had cuts all over her arms from the glass, and she took sleep medicine to help her fall to sleep. She also claims the accounting that Johnny has given about his finger is false. So Amber supposedly escaped Johnny because she didn't want to fight anymore. Like she was over it. But there was an audio clip that had come out where Amber and Johnny are speaking about this incident. And it doesn't sound like Amber was running away from Johnny. It sounded like Johnny was trying to get away from Amber to de-escalate the situation. No, it's not to get, it's just to get out of a bad situation while it's happening before it gets worse. In Australia, when we had the big fight where I lost the tip of my finger, at least five bathrooms and two bedrooms I went to. To, to, to avoid talking to me, to, to avoid escape working the, out. That's to the escape problem. the fight. You don't escape the fight. You escape the solution. No. You escape the solution. No. You s escape figuring it out. We cannot work it out if you run away to the bathroom every time. Listen to me. Listen to me. A boxer can't go 12 rounds without a fucking minute break. I'm not, not giving you a minute break. You do it at minute three at the beginning of an argument. No. There are rounds, man. And when it gets too fucking hairy... The ref splits them apart or whatever. Hmm, interesting. Well, first off, the fact that they're talking about their relationship as in terms of boxing is really concerning. But you heard Amber claim that Johnny ran to the bathroom and he tried to run from the solution, which it seems like the solution in this case is just 
constant fighting because I'm the type of person, if you fight with me, I need a break. I need to go and get my own space. But let's talk a little bit about Johnny's finger because that's been a big part of this story and he had a pretty severe injury. So Amber claims that Johnny picked up glass and started throwing them like bombs and grenades. These bottles were breaking everywhere. Here's a picture of the space where Johnny was supposedly throwing the glass that resulted in his finger being severed. So in this moment, Amber is claiming that Johnny was being very violent. She claims that she tried to run past him to get away and he grabbed her by the hair, hurled her around. I fell onto a ping pong table and it collapsed under her, under Amber. Well, this man named Ben King actually did testify and he is the house manager for the home in Australia that they were staying in. He did confirm that there was a collapsed ping pong table. So that does, um, I guess, help like her accounting of what happened there. But supposedly this man and Amber traveled home together or departed from the home together. And he claims he never saw any injuries that appeared on um, Amber, even though she's claiming that they had this huge physical altercation. So on day three of their trip to Australia, Amber claims that Johnny was still drinking. He was drinking Jack Daniels and he was intoxicated. At one point, he peed outside the home. But that Dr. Nipper, who testified earlier, he claimed that he was at the home on the third day and he never saw Johnny intoxicated. He moved to. So did you see Mr. Depp in the house? Yeah, I saw Mr. Depp outside the house in the car. Okay, so this note, this note is accurate, correct? Yes. Was Mr. Depp intoxicated when you saw him? I don't... Was Mr. Depp coherent? Uh, yes, quite. He was quite coherent? Yes. What do you recall him saying to you? I don't recall the conversation specifically, but part of his finger was missing. This doctor also testifies that when he saw Amber, he didn't see any injuries and she didn't ask for any help. When you went into the house, did you see Miss Heard? Yes. And how did she appear? She was certainly upset. Did Ms. Hurd seek any medical attention to, from you for any injuries at that time? No. Did Ms. Hurd seek any medical attention from Ms. Lloyd at that time? Uh, no. Did you observe any physical injuries to Ms. Hurd when you saw her that um, March 20, 2015? No. Then there was a nurse who testified and claimed that she didn't see any injuries on Amber as well. There was maybe a bruise on her arm, but nothing like Amber described. And I believe you testified you don't recall whether Miss Heard was at the house when you went to attend to Mr. Depp, correct? Right. Okay. Do you remember seeing Miss Heard in Australia? Mm. Yes. Did you ever see any injuries on Miss Heard when she was in Australia? Yes. What did you see? A bruise on her arm. Anything else? No. Did she have any injuries to her face that you can recall? Not that I recall. Any cuts or abrasions that you can recall? Not that I recall. Um, do you recall Ms. Heard ever seeking medical treatment from you while she, you, while she was in Australia? I do not recall her ever seeking a medical treatment from me. So was Amber injured? We don't really know, but we know for a fact that Johnny was injured because his hand was injured and he also had some like burn on his face. Johnny claims that Amber put a cigarette out on his face, which you can see on his cheek in some of the photos where he's on the stretcher. And Amber also claims that Johnny actually hurt his finger because uh, he was smashing a telephone and it ultimately severed his finger. She has gone back and forth on the this 
allegation as far as how he hurt his finger. I mean, in this instance, she was asked like, okay, so he was smashing the phone that was on the wall next to the fridge and it broke into pieces. And that's how he hurt his finger, right? And now she's claiming she doesn't know. But when asked if she had lied about this, Amber was firm that she saw the incident go down. But a lot of people debate whether Johnny hurt his own finger or if Amber had a role in this. And let me try my best to break it all down for you guys. So Amber actually recorded the aftermath of the situation. And during this recording, she is heard saying that she never wanted to hurt him and that she didn't do it on purpose. Then there's an audio clip where you can hear the doctor suggesting that Amber had shattered the bone of Johnny's finger. There are also some random messages that kind of support that Johnny's finger was cut off, not accidentally cut off. Like this text message where Johnny is describing some kind of pain and claiming it's almost as bad as when the finger was cut off. Here's another text message where Johnny admits to lying about what happened to his finger. He claims that he lied about it to protect her. He also writes bordering personality, which, um, Amber does have some mental health issues. I mean, everyone has their mental health issues, but Amber does have some like personality disorders and it can play into her ability to, I guess, cope with her emotions and to deal with, you know, fights and relationships. Threw the large bottle and it made contact and shattered everywhere. I honestly didn't, I didn't feel the pain at first at all. I felt heat and I felt as if something were dripping down my hand, you know, and then I looked down and realized that the the tip of my finger had been severed. I was looking directly at my bone. Blood was just uh, pouring. I, I don't know what a nervous breakdown feels like, but that's probably the closest that I've ever been. Nothing made sense. And I knew in my mind and in my heart, this is not life. No one should have to go through this. 
In this accounting from Amber, because she has retold this story plenty of times, she claims that Johnny severed his finger by punching her and the wall. And in this accounting, she claims while he was smashing the phone on the wall, Johnny severely injured his finger, cutting off the tip. I did not throw a vodka bottle or any kind of bottle. Okay. Um, nor did I cause that injury to Johnny's finger. Even at one point, Amber told people that Johnny had, uh, had to fly back to the U.S. for surgery because he he injured his hand while working on a film. So there's a bunch of different stories that Amber has told in the past. I mean, maybe this one, for instance, you know, she was trying to protect Johnny and that situation from going public. But like, again, another story told. But it's a tricky situation. And there are some text messages that have been used against Johnny. In this text message to his doctor, you guys can see at the very bottom, he says, I cut the top of my middle finger off. What should I do? Um, this is literally the day of, so maybe again, he's trying to protect her at this point, but it's like, it doesn't help when you're looking like in the courtroom at these messages. And it's like, he's acknowledging that he cut his finger when in fact he was probably just trying to push a narrative that, it, you know, it was some accident or something to protect Amber, like he said he was at one point. After Johnny's finger was injured, there was some questionable behavior, and I have to talk about it because he didn't seek help for his finger for about 24 hours. And after the injury, he like stuck his finger in a paint can and like drew all over the place. Oh, he'd uh, written, um, he'd written on the bathroom mirrors uh, in the bedroom. And I, I believe he, um, there was another mirror. I just don't recall which bathroom it was in. I suppose it was the one that I went to, which is on the very bottom level um, where I was, um, retching uh, for lack of better way to describe it i think it was in that um bathroom that he also wrote on that mirror as well what if anything do you recall? in blood and I'm, paint sorry i'm sorry what if anything do you recall of any lampshades being written on well he uh, wrote on messages to me um you know things to the effect of go getter you know, horror sort of thing that I thought. Here are some photos of those drawings that are, I guess, like blood mixed with paint or paint thinner or something along those lines, which I just think is like really scary. Like when I saw that part or when I heard that part of the story, I was really taken back because I do believe like there's mental health on both sides. Like you, that someone that does that, they're not mentally well. And I do think that Johnny was probably to the point where he was broken. And, and as I said, this, this, feeling of nervous being in, a, in the middle of some sort of nervous breakdown I started to write with my blood in my own blood on the on the walls um, little reminders from our past that essentially represented lies that she had told me lies that I had caught her in. What do you guys think about the finger situation below? Do you feel like Amber's at fault for his finger getting injured? I mean, Johnny claims that there's these bottles that were thrown and that his finger was severed that way, but then, you know, Amber's story keeps on changing, so we can't even follow that. So comment below what you guys think. I really tried my best to explain it all, but I know it's really like, oh, it's so difficult. Let's move on to our next incident, which happened on March 23rd, 2015. Supposedly, Johnny had hit Amber repeatedly. Amber claims in March 2015, Johnny and Amber were in LA and Johnny's hand was still in a cast because of what happened in Australia. After becoming upset, he started destroying her home and her belongings and her closet. Her sister, Whitney, who is another person we'll be talking about in this video, was there as well. She claims that he attacked her and her sister. Let's go ahead and play a deposition where she describes this incident. And he was hitting me hard and repeatedly and I was screaming the security walks in and they don't do anything about it and there he 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 he, he makes this motion uh, when Jerry Judge yells Fox or uh, Sean I can't remember who it was and um, and my all we had was a little bit of separation 
and my sister runs down the stairs. Uh, it's uh, we're on a landing in between two flights of stairs. Miss Heard, I must interrupt you, you because can't. I've you can't. asked you a yes then or no withdraw question. Your, withdraw your question then because Ms. she's Heard, answering. Prior to today's date, um, had had any time has Johnny have you ever hit Johnny Depp? Yeah. Yeah. You You've already asked and she's already answered and you interrupted her. Miss Heard, have you ever hit Johnny Depp prior to today? Vegas of times. Hey, everyone on this side of the room, please. Objection 352. It's not relevant to this domestic violence pursuit. Overruled. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Answer it however you want to, including the way you were just... If I'm you asking wish. for a yes or no answer. You don't have to answer it the way she wants you to answer it. He was about to push my sister down the stairs. She was attempting to break us up. I am protective over my baby sister. When he laid hands on her, I don't know what I did, but I know I jumped in between the actions that I saw could lead to a fatal injury to my sister. She was standing on the top of a flight of the stairs and she has never hurt anyone in her life and she does not deserve to be pushed down the flight of stairs. And it looked like she was about to be. And I would have done what anybody who has a child or a sister would have done. I acted defensively in her life. I saw her standing on top of a flight of his stairs and trying to interrupt a fight in between him and I. Ms. I don't know what part of my body I, I put in between me and him and, and her. But I would have done anything. I would have done anything to prevent her from being pushed on a flight of stairs. Even though Whitney might claim that she doesn't like Johnny, there are text messages from later that year in 2015 where they were quite friendly with each other. But let's go ahead and get back to this fight because Amber claims that Johnny was pushing around her stuff in her closet and pushing over her clothes. So supposedly after this altercation, Johnny went to her closet and pushed over her stuff. And it does look pretty messy. It looks like, I, I mean, the clothes were pushed over. But Nurse Debbie did testify and claimed that she did see them argue, but never saw like Amber throw anything at Johnny and actually only ever saw Johnny, you know, push over a clothing rack. So it wasn't as physical as they're describing. There's also a text message from Nurse Debbie where she claims Johnny was trying to de-escalate everything. She does claim that they had to physically restrain both of them because their fight did get super heated. So when it comes to this allegation in particular, we've got Amber Heard and her sister Whitney versus Johnny and his team and those people. Whitney did claim that both of Johnny's security guards were there and were present during this fight. But there was only one security guard there named Travis and he claims he walked into the residence and he he saw them both fighting. He saw Amber throw cans of Red Bull at Johnny, saw um, her spit at him, saw a bunch of things, but never saw Johnny get physical with Amber. Travis, the bodyguard, also claims he had never seen any bruises or marks on Amber Heard before. There's another testimony that wasn't great for Amber either, and it comes from her sister, Whitney's ex-employer. Her name is Jennifer. So in Jennifer Howe's witness statement, she explains that she knows these people because she had been Whitney's boss before. She was also around when this incident went down and she claims she spotted some lies in Whitney's testimony. So Whitney went to Jennifer all frantic claiming that Amber was hitting Johnny, that she would not stop, that when Whitney tried to intervene that that Amber pushed her down the stairs and that she was scared that her own sister was going to unalive Johnny Depp. Supposedly, even Whitney told Jennifer she doesn't understand why Johnny's staying in this relationship with Amber and that uh, Whitney and Johnny had a good relationship, a good sister-in-law, brother-in-law relationship, friendship. So it looks like Whitney ran to Jennifer for help, was just talking about this entire mess, and she knows exactly what Amber's capable of. And ultimately, that's why I don't believe what Whitney Whitney has to say at all because Amber has gotten physical with Whitney before. Here's an old clip where Whitney discusses this. Did you get in a fight or something? Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Got into an altercation. Proof, say Johnny Depp's lawyers, that Amber Heard attacked her sister. I can't believe Amber beat your ass. Unaired reality TV footage sees Whitney Henrique repeatedly avoid questions about a fight. Okay, did you really start the fight with your sister or did she start it? For real, for real, for real. We're not gonna talk about that. Uh, she yes. really did whoop your butt. Oh, 
Mr Depp's legal team say it shows her with marks to her chest and arm. They accused Ms Henriquez of lying in her evidence the day before when she said Amber Heard had never been violent towards her. The video was released anonymously late Thursday evening to Johnny Depp's lawyers. He's suing the publishers of the Sun newspaper over an article describing him as a wife beater. The footage is crucial, Mr Depp's legal team say, because they're arguing that Amber Heard was the violent one during the couple's relationship. Ms Heard's sister says that their fight was just verbal, that the show's producers were trying to create a storyline and that Mr Depp's lawyers were looking for injuries that weren't there. Whitney Henriquez denied giving false evidence and said, I'm here because she was a victim of domestic violence for no other reason. I'm here to tell the truth and to do the right thing. In court, friends of Amber Heard also backed up her claims. She told one of them Mr Depp would rather destroy her than let her leave. All evidence has now finished with speeches from both sides next week. Then it will be up to a judge to decide, with Hollywood reputations potentially on the line. Adele Robinson, Sky News at the High Court. Amber's former assistant also testified at some point, and she made it a point to say that Amber treated, I mean, everyone like absolute crap, but especially her sister. She treated her sister like a dog. You testified previously that you observed Miss Heard be verbally abusive to her sister. Yes. What do you recall about that? It was ongoing kick the doll kind of relationship with her sister, so it's really hard to pinpoint any specifics, but... Uh, yeah, uh, her poor sister was treated like the dog that you kick, basically. You previously testified that Ms. Heard, you observed Ms. Heard being verbally abusive to her mother. Mm -hmm. What specifically did you observe? Well, there is a video that, um, line where you can see her being abusive first and foremost, so it's not even based on what I'm telling you. It's what I've seen, the interactions between the two of them when her mother was still alive and the fact that her mother was terrified of her. Did her mother tell you she was terrified of her? She personally told me she was terrified of her. Did you ever witness Miss Heard tongue lash her mother? Here and there, yes. Especially when it was a uh, build up to a stressful event or something like that, yeah. What do you guys think about that situation there? I do have a feeling that Whitney is just trying to protect her sister and. <sighs> Yeah, that's a messy one, but let's go ahead and move on to our next allegation, and it comes from September 2015. Supposedly, Johnny and Amber have an altercation involving her slamming a door in his face. She claims he scraped her toes while forcing the door open, resulting in her hitting him to escape. Johnny claims that he was punched in the jaw, and Amber spoke about this in a deposition. So on the tape, you tell Johnny Depp that you did mean to hit him. Objection, that's argumentative, and it misstates what the recording was. And it also misrepresents, mm -hmm. misrepresents okay. that what actually happened, which is him trying to get into a room, I'm trying to keep him out of, <coughs> and then he runs the door over my toes, trying to get into the room. I try to push him out of it, which is what the hit is referred to. And Johnny, whenever he was injured or touched at all, we referred to it in these ways of punching or clocked or whatever. And whether you didn't discussed it with him or not, the last thing you do in, in talking to him afterwards or trying to reconcile with him is to get into what the definition of those words mean to him. Just say what So happened. I just never, I never even addressed it. He would, if he was ever pushed, it was, it was a quote. He, he called it a, a cold clock. I mean, it's just very dramatic. Isn't about it true? Him. So Amber's setting the scene for that situation, but there's been another clip that is leaked online, and it's from this situation. There's really no context when it comes to this clip, but Johnny asks Amber, how are your toes? And you can hear that they are both frustrated in the audio. The face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, even a lot of fights been around a long time. I know. Yeah, no, I when you f***ing have a closed you fist. You get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this. But I did not punch you. I did not f***ing deck you. I f***ing was hitting you. You can't I don't know what you. the boat motion of my actual hand was. But you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are your toes? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? How are your I, toes? I'm not sitting here f***ing about it, am I? You are. are That's the difference between me toes. and you. You're a f***ing baby. 
because you start physical you fights. Such a baby. Because Pull you, the f off, because you start physical fights. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. So I had because to get the f out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. Every single time. What? What? What's your excuse? When there's not a physical fight, then what's the excuse there? You're still being admirable, right? Just by. Just by running away and you can sit here and, and call me names but you get called a name and what do you do that's the last insult you're a baby you're a hypocrite you don't do anything that you actually do you expect from people what you can't give them if they do something a taste of it to you you f lose it but yet you dish it out so you can hear Amber admitting to harming Johnny there. And then Johnny is sarcastically asking, how are your toes? How are your toes? Probably because he was probably more injured in that situation. Just saying. Let's move on to the next incident, which happens in April 2015. In April 2015, Amber's injuries from that trip to Australia are supposedly visible at a premiere that she attends. As you guys can see, there are scratches on Amber's arm. And here's another photo of those injuries. But Johnny's lawyers have argued in court that these are a result of self-harm and not from that trip. Now let's move on to our next incident, which goes down in July 2015 during their honeymoon. So this account of the incident says August 2015, but I've seen some that claim it happened in July. Anyways, Johnny and Amber were traveling on this train in Malaysia. They got into an argument and she's not even sure what it's about, but supposedly he started harming her, held her up against the wall, grabbing her by her neck. In a diary that Amber submitted as evidence, she wrote a note on July 27th in Singapore, where she claims that she and and Johnny got into a physical altercation and he grabbed a shirt and put it around her neck and it was violent. Amber claims that she has a bunch of photos that can back up the injuries that she experienced, but none of them were provided. But Johnny did provide a photo because he claims he was hurt and that his nose was injured. Here's the photo that was used in trial. And as you guys can see, Johnny's face does look pretty red. I mean, it's kind of giving sunburned vibes, but it's really red around his nose. Let me go ahead and read some of the transcripts from a court hearing. So they look at this photo and they ask, this photo is taken on the train, is it not? Amber says, yes. Then they claim, Mr. Depp had an injury on his face. Did he not? Did he not? Amber says, no. On his nose, can you see? Amber says, no. This is another occasion where you have completely turned an incident around and blamed Johnny is it not? Amber claims, no, I have tons of pictures from this vacation and these days, and he's uninjured. He's the one that hurt her. Jesus strangled her. She hasn't provided any pictures of her injuries to the court, but there is a photo of her at the train station on the last night of their train trip. Obviously, you can't like take away a lot from this photo. I mean, you can't really see any injuries here, but again, like this is just a photo that people are, you know, putting into the archive of, you know, does it look like she's really having a bad time? Who knows? Again, it's just like, yeah, here's a photo. I just want to present it because there's a photo of Johnny and his nose injured. There's really nothing of Amber, even though she claims she has a bunch of photos that show injuries. If there were photos from this trip, I do believe they would have been made public already because she would want that as supporting evidence, which takes us on to our next altercation, which does have photos. And this goes down in December 2015. Johnny Depp allegedly drags Amber by her hair through his LA penthouse and pulls out clumps of her hair. Amber claims that he like slapped her and then they headbutted and it was a, a, another violent fight. Here are some photos of Amber's injuries. As you can see, she does have bruising under her eye. She also provided photos of her scalp where she claims she was pulled by her scalp and there's some hair that was pulled out, which looks very painful. Even though those photos are pretty bad, Amber has gotten some criticism because she describes the injuries as far worse. She claims that she had two black eyes, a broken nose, and a broken lip, bruised ribs, and bruises all over her body. I had bruised ribs, bruises all over her body, again, bruises on her forearms trying to defend the blows. I had two black eyes, a broken nose, all of this. 
I mean, those photos look pretty bad, but this sounds, this does sound a lot worse. I mean, a broken nose sounds like a nightmare for me. Amber did see a nurse at some point, like right after this fight, and they didn't have any record of these injuries. Supposedly two nurses saw Amber and they did not find any bruising. The nurse actually recommends that she goes and sees a doctor because she's claiming that she's has, she has all these injuries, yet they're not like seeing those. They do acknowledge that she like has, you know, Amber has dry lips and they do bust often and they bleed often. Again, maybe she could have gotten hurt in this incident, but that is a problem that Amber does have, you know, on the regular. She always has dry lips. I wasn't there, so I don't know what Amber was experiencing, but she has been accused of cherry picking some evidence to present to the court to make it seem a lot worse. In one court document, Amber expresses that they went to a doctor's office to get checked for a concussion and that's what they share. But they don't go into detail that ultimately the doctor didn't really find anything wrong with Amber at this point. The same week that this incident went down, Amber was actually featured on the James Gordon show. Supposedly, she wore heavy makeup to hide her injuries. Also, I am coming out with a James Gordon video soon, just letting you guys know this, but she was trying to hide her injuries with her makeup. I do want to listen to a moment from opening statements that's getting a lot of people's attention online. Here's Heard's attorney. You're going to hear the testimony from Amber about how she had to mix the different colors for the different days of the bruises as they were as they developed in the different coloring and how she would use these to touch those up to be able to cover those okay so why is this getting a lot of attention well she's holding up a milani makeup compact milani is the brand so milani put out a TikTok video over the weekend with a caption let the record show our correcting kit launched in 2017 take a look at that there's one thing you can expect from me and that's the unexpected International Super Spy. Super Spy. I want to bring in HL and legal analyst Joey Jackson and CNN legal analyst Ariva Martin. Welcome both of you. So Joey, if that makeup came out in 2017, like the brand is saying, that's after the alleged abuse, is this a big problem for the defense? And is, is it something that would even come up in court? <laughs> yeah, good morning to you, Cheyenne and Ariva. It obviously is. I mean, if you're making the representation that your client needed to use this makeup in order to cover the abuse, uh, uh, be, excuse me, bruises that Johnny Depp imposed upon her and the makeup was not yet available, that's problematic. It could be just a simple mistake, though. Simply because the makeup was not available and she was using her alternative makeup does not otherwise indicate that Johnny Depp was not engaged in this abuse. And so it's a misstep, to be clear. It needs to be explained to be even clearer but it does not go to the ultimate issue as to whether johnny depp was being abusive and whether or not he bruised her such that amber heard needed to use any type of makeup in order to cover herself up but to be clear it certainly will come up and in amber's defense there was someone who testified from uh on set, like a, a stylist, a makeup artist who claims they did notice that she had this like, you know, uh, lip color on and she had a bruise under her eye. And this stylist in particular helped Amber cover up these marks for her appearance on the show. Beautiful 1920s, you know, ma stage makeup on and like flower crowns and all this stuff. Uh -huh. And then my hand, and my face, <laughs> and then my hands. <laughs> and then you could say to people, guys, it's a character choice. <laughs> right, right. Oh, please. She's on there's no doubt in my mind that something physical happened in December, and Johnny did admit to headbutting Amber, but he claims it was by accident. He's he happy screaming. He's like, somehow the end all be all is a sort of offensive thing. You can throw a punch, but yeah, you, screaming is okay. You can headbutt somebody screaming, but don't scream. Huh? I headbutted you. Can believe that? Forehead. That doesn't break him out. Johnny did submit images of his own injuries from this incident to court. Now let's move on to 2016. April 2016, because it's Amber's 30th birthday, which is a huge birthday. I mean, if you're 30 plus, comment below. I love our 30 plus. Like, 
I'm scared to be 30, but I'm like also excited. It's like part of me is like, oh, I'm scared, but I'm also like, I want to like get older and settle down and all that. So Johnny shows up late to Amber's birthday bash and it just starts a huge fight. Supposedly he had been drinking and they argued badly. I mean, he had to get out of there because her birthday was pretty much ruined. I mean, I would be pretty mad too if my partner didn't show up to my like birthday party, but I also wouldn't be in a relationship that's this extremely toxic. I mean, I, you, know, you never know though. I mean, I have a lot of sympathy for this entire situation because like it's you really don't know what it's like unless you are there. But Johnny claims that Amber attacked him over this incident and got physical with him and punched him and grabbed him all of that because she was so mad that he showed up late and drunk to her birthday. Johnny actually submitted photo evidence of his injury to the court with this whole like complaint. Um, but it turns out that this image is from 2015 and you could even see in the timestamp at the top that this image wasn't from this fight. Johnny never like swore by that image before um, they actually went to like testify and everything. They removed that piece of evidence because they realized it wasn't from that incident in particular. So he never tried to pass it off as being from that fight, but um, it was submitted with the original paperwork, which takes us into poop gate, which is, oh, I can't believe we're talking about it now. We've gotten to that point of the video where the feces was found on the bed. So a day after this incident in April, there's a big, huge turd that is found in the bed, Johnny's bed, and pretty much Johnny believes that Amber did this herself, produced it herself, and put it in his bed in spite of the whole birthday situation. Amber claims it's actually her dog's poo. I mean, her dog has bowel issues, and like, you know, dogs are dogs. Like, doggy had to go, doggy went in the bed, and um, that's what it is. But uh, a lot of people, they're not buying that story. This whole situation was actually debated in the UK because they went to trial there, and the judge kind of took Amber's side because she doesn't believe, or the judge didn't believe that like Amber produced this. The judge ultimately agreed with Amber that the poopy came from the puppy, but a lot of people, they, they still believe that Amber did this because it wasn't like, I mean, looking at the picture too, it wasn't like a little one. Like my dog, my bunny, she goes little and that dog's smaller than my dog. So I, sounds like, can you imagine being 30 years old and pooping in your husband's bed over a fight. Like if that actually happened, I mean, <laughs> that's why this whole situation is so wild because like it, it really could have happened and it doesn't even sound like real life. Now let's talk about our next allegation, which happens on May 21st, 2016. So Amber is arguing with Johnny and asks their friend and neighbor Raquel to come over. Raquel states that she heard an argument and entered to see Johnny yelling at Amber while she was coward. She proceeds to place her body between them to ultimately protect Amber. Raquel claims this wasn't the first time that she heard Amber complain about Johnny getting physical with her. So when she got that text message at 806 p.m. she came over immediately. The way the media has taken Raquel's testimony and switched it around is a little bit shady because they make it seem like, you know, like, like, Amber was down coward and Johnny was like towering over her like you know and she had a run in to put herself between them to protect Amber but Raquel actually states that they were about 12 feet apart so Amber was yelling help me and she's like is everything okay and Amber's like no help me and it's just like wait there he wasn't that close to her when Johnny saw that Raquel came in he was like get the f out of here like get out of here like whatever and then he started to walk towards Amber that's when she was like okay like let me step in and make sure that nothing happens here Johnny Depp's security also has a similar story security claims that when they walked in Johnny was 10 or 20 feet away from Amber and that Amber her demeanor switched when they walked in the room and she acted very surprised and was like if he, you know, harms me again, I'm calling 911. Amber has a photo of her injury from that night and police were called and they responded. Four police officers appeared. Amber refused to provide the police with a report or to file charges against Johnny. So the police officer showed up and, you know, she ultimately wanted them there, right? But she didn't actually file any charges or even a report. 
Pretty much everyone involved in this situation has been asked to court and has testified. And I found two police officers who testified and claimed that they saw no injuries on Amber. There was also an employee at the building who worked at the building where they lived. And they also claimed that they saw no injuries on Amber. So that really didn't help her case. Now, moving on to the next day, May 22nd, Amber has a visitor. James Franco visits her and there is some footage that has has been presented in court where James asks her, what happened to you? Johnny and his lawyers believe that Amber was having an affair with James Franco, and that's something that Johnny thought for quite some time. And then the following day, May 23rd, Amber files for divorce. At this point, she is granted a temporary restraining order from Johnny, and she also seeks out spousal support. So she's already trying to get that money, which I was, uh, when I saw that, I was like, I don't know if that's standard. Is that normal? Come below, you know, but like, oh, you're already trying to get the money. Like, that's not a good look. It wasn't until January 14th, 2017, when they finalized their divorce. And the agreement is unsettling because Amber was given $7 million to donate. And you guys might already know about this situation. So Amber was granted $7 million and she vowed to donate that money between the ACLU and Children's Hospital. Well, Johnny didn't trust Amber with that $7 million. I mean, at this point, they have zero trust in their relationship, like negative trust at this point. Well, in May 2016, Johnny decides to make these donations himself. And Amber's team is not having it because they're like, you're just trying to get a tax break, man. So they call him out and they say he should pay $14 million now. Obviously, that's a very aggressive approach. Like, you're not going to tell this man to pay double now just because he went to go and pay the charity's loan. If the chair, like... <sighs> If he, if he's, if it's because he doesn't trust Amber, I get it. I don't think he's going in with the mentality, oh, I'm trying to get a tax break. I think he's thinking this woman's not going to pay these charities. And ultimately, that's kind of what happened, but not entirely. Amber did make some payments to these charities. And as you guys can see, they are listed down here on this document, but the total is not uh, $7 million. But by October 2018, Amber was doing press and she told this guy in an interview uh, on a show for Dutch TV that she had donated the money already. And then there was a divorce settlement. You got $7 million. People were saying this is all about the money. But then you did something that uh, twisted that whole argument. What did you do with that money? $7 million in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los but a letter from the Children's Hospital dated June 2019, so a year later, asked Amber for the rest of the money. They claimed they received the first installment of this donation, but nothing more. So Amber, why are you taking your time with this money? She actually lied in court because at one point she claimed that Johnny, you know, thought I was in it for the money, but I actually donated my divorce settlement to um, charity. She said the entire amount of my divorce settlement was, char uh, was donated to charity girl it wasn't because we found out the charities were asking where their money was so like she's claiming that the, i you know i'm not a gold digger because i donated all my you know settlement money to charity well the charities are now asking where their money's at I think that's something we can all unbiasedly agree on that that's pretty messed up that she would receive the money claimed to donate and ultimately not donate. But Amber will later on say that she needed the money because she had all these lawsuits. That's why, like, she had to keep this money because she's now being sued. But let's get back to the timeline because on June 1st, 2016, Amber puts out an article with People Magazine. On the front of this magazine, you can see there's Amber's face with injuries on it. She talks a little bit about their relationship. And honestly, Amber gets a lot of heat for divorcing Johnny because when she did divorce him, he was literally at his lowest point. Like she filed for divorce three days after his mother passed away. A lot was going on then. I mean, keep in mind there was that fight and then there was the James Franco and then she, like he literally must've been in the worst point of his entire life, his mom just passed away. Now his wife is divorcing him. It's like everything has just hit an all time low. And I'm not trying to be biased in this video. I'm really trying to be unbiased in some way. I know people are gonna like read to me to fill to be like, you are so biased, blah, blah. I'm really trying to just put everything that's been out there on the table. But like, I don't know, losing a parent is something I'm so 
fearful of one day. I'm sure you guys are too. Comment below. I mean, I think we all are. It's just such a scary thing to go through. So I can't imagine like how he was feeling. Now let's move on to August 2016 because there's a very interesting video that was released by TMZ. It was taken back in February 2016 and it's pretty much Johnny reacting to kind of his mother's passing but really just I think his mother's illness because she wasn't doing well and Amber actually recorded this moment where he was panicking, throwing things around, pouring drinks. It was not a good look. And I'll play a snippet of this clip right here. I can't play the entire thing because it looks like this video was ultimately sold to TMZ. So it looks like this video was taken from Amber, sold to TMZ, probably for a profit. And TMZ, when you when you, they buy or they own a video, they copyright it. So this video is actually copyrighted on the internet. Um, and it's pretty crazy to me because like that means someone literally sold it to them. And can you imagine like filming someone in this state and then later on like selling? I just know, I don't know. I mean, it shows that he's an emotional man and obviously he cannot cope with some of his emotions. But at the same time, like who does that? Then we get to 2018 and The Sun releases an article where they refer to Johnny Depp as a wife beater. After that article comes out, it was a there was it was a complete mess. I mean, the media storm was ridiculous and Johnny Depp decided to sue The Sun and the people who owned The Sun. He ultimately lost this lawsuit. Um, it's pretty hard to win a lot of these defamation lawsuits even in like amber heard's case the current lawsuit it's really difficult to deal with that but um it was a nasty trial over there in the uk in october 2018 johnny spoke to the british gq and he spoke a little bit about the allegations and he says that the allegations are insane and that ultimately one day the truth will come out and people will see what really happened between them at this point, it seems like it's the battle of the presses, battle of the media between Amber and Johnny to pretty much like, I don't know, clean up their reputation, I would assume. They're doing press to try to like get their side of the story out. Well, Amber does an interview with the Washington Post in 2018, and this article is really aggressive. And even though she doesn't name Johnny outright she's clearly speaking about johnny i mean at one point in the article she wrote imagine a powerful man as a ship like the titanic the ship is a huge enterprise when it strikes an iceberg there are a lot of people on board desperate to patch up the holes not because they believe in or even care about the ship but because their own fates depend on the enterprise so she wrote it in kind of a poetic way, but really pushed the narrative that she is a victim in this relationship. Clearly, there are a lot of problems in this relationship, but making it public has made it so much worse, and it ultimately led to Johnny Depp losing everything he's got. Two days after that Washington Post article came out, there was news that Disney was no longer going to work with Johnny Depp on the Pirates of the Caribbean. But Johnny even says that if, you know, if Disney came with $300 million and asked him to do another movie, he still would say no because they have so wronged him by writing him off so quickly after that Washington Post because the news came out and then they, two days later, it's like, oh, Disney wants nothing to do with you. I believe we need to hear out these trials because there's a lot to learn here and you can't go and end someone's career over a, one article. And that's why Johnny ultimately went to go and sue Amber Heard for defamation over this situation. And that is the current case that we are learning about every day in Fairfax, Virginia. So Johnny filed this lawsuit and pretty much this is the suit that we've seen all over the internet. As part of the lawsuit, he submitted a ton of evidence to show that he was in fact a victim of Amber's. They accuse Amber of mixing amphetamines and alcohol and prescriptions and she would be the person to get violent with Johnny and they believe that he, that she's the agitator, she's the ins instigator in this situation and between all the fights they ever had. She hit, punched, and kicked me. She also repeatedly and frequently threw objects into onto my body, head, including heavy bottles, cans, burning candles, burning candles, television remotes, um, paint thinner, cans, which 
severely injured Johnny. Then on April 11th, 2019, Amber responded to Johnny and she had 300 pages of evidence claiming that he was in fact the person who was harming her, which that's pretty damning. I mean, 300 pages is a lot of stuff to sift through and that's what we've been hearing about in court. Moving on to January 2020, there is a two hour audio clip that is leaked to the public and in this audio clip, Amber admits to hitting Johnny and Johnny also can confirms that they have been physical with each other. This clip ultimately goes viral online. I just couldn't take the idea of more physicality, more physical abuse on each other. <coughs> because had we continued, it, it would have gotten not bad. And baby, I told you this once, and I'm scared to death of it. We are a f***ing crime scene waiting to happen no. if we don't get our together. And that, by getting our together, that might mean f***ing A, we do this and we make it. That might mean, goddamn, you know, you say, I've tried and done to Lou, but we, we've got to get our together as individuals and as a couple because I love you and I do not want to leave you. I do not want a divorce. I do not want you out of my life. I just want peace. And if I'm the culprit, majority of the time, I will f do everything I can. And I will recognize when I'm f***ing starting to go sideways, I will recognize it. There's a lot to take away from there, but that's not it because a month after that situation, another clip is leaked by the Daily Mail. Who's giving the Daily Mail these clips? I wonder if it's like Johnny or Amber, who's giving the media these clips to release. But this clip goes viral as well because Amber is mocking Johnny saying that no one will believe you. Pretty much insinuating that Johnny's not going to be a victim in this situation and that he won't prevail in court. Uh, my credit is, is my credibility. You know what? I, that, and why I, did you put that out there? I did not. You forced me. Your team forced me to by going on the offense. I, I didn't force you to. to I promise. Look up the timeline to these things. Everything is. Forget it. Forget it. You don't believe what I say. You don't believe what I say. But I, I did not, I did not choose this. You I, know, every step of the way has been an offense. I did I, not put this anywhere. I didn't. Uh, let me talk to the team. I did not call the cops. I need some no statement. I.O. called the cops. I did not call the cops. You told I.O. to call the cops. I did not call the cops, and I did not give them any statement when they came. I've been trying to protect you. I you told I.O. to call the cops. Off. When, when, while it, while it was happening? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because the last time that it got crazy between us, I really did think I was going to lose my life. And I thought you would do it on accident. And I told you that. I said, oh my God, I thought for the first time. Amber, I, I lost oh. a finger, man. Come on. I had a f I had a f A I mineral, can a jar, a can of mineral spirits I thrown at my nose. I Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, man, I, I'm a victim of domestic violence, and yes. I, you know, it's a fair fight. And see how many people believe or side with you. And then I want to play another clip for you guys where Amber pretty much threatens Johnny that she has enough evidence against him to go against him in court. So pretty much bring on the legal battle because she's been, I mean, they've obviously have a ton of audio recordings of each other. So um, they were both kind of like testing each other. Like, you know, I'm the victim. No, I'm the victim. Like they both want to be the victim here. The reason I haven't filed that police statement, which has been used against me, by the way, every day. And the only reason I won't do it, I haven't done it, is because I don't want to hurt you, and that means it goes out of my hands. And every, we have a third-party guy, a uh, third-party prosecutor come, 
and um, and a criminal lawyer come and they went like the problem is hearing from you like your biggest struggle is that this is just this is such a it's the most solid evidence case of domestic violence I've ever seen and if you get this over to them or present any part of it it's, they will prosecute him and I felt like I I I'm not like I would never want that for you. Because I don't even, it's hard for me to even understand, I don't call myself, it's like, it's not in my head, it's hard for me to even accept any sort of victimdom ever. And this, Remember, this, listen, here's what I, here's, I, 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 I understand, I understand, and I don't want to hurt you either. I, I'm only going to say this. I, I love you. <laughs> I love you. And I've always loved you. And <clears throat> I know that, um, look, you do whatever you feel you have to do. I'm telling you now it's a mistake to go to court. But if you want to go to court, we'll go to court. I would rather, I would rather take care of it a different way. I think it would, it would be very good for you and I think it would be very good for me. Um, but you know what, I've baby, been called a liar, baby, 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 Amber, I didn't call you those things. I do think Johnny loved Amber and that he wanted to handle this privately because he wanted to ultimately protect her. Um, I think now that like they've gone through so much and it's gotten just so nasty, he's kind of like screw it like he's kind of just put everything out there and you know allowing the world to decide what his fate is when it comes to his reputation um amber is kind of going through it too i mean she's got the aquaman series and there is a petition out there with two million signatures to remove her from aquaman supposedly she only has 10 minutes in the next movie but it's not looking good for amber i mean johnny's lost everything it looks like amber's losing everything and honestly this is a lose-lose situation but when you've lost so much there's you know i just think that like I think Johnny's doing the right thing by taking her to court and sharing his side of the story because I do feel like he he's he was kind of like I don't know off his guard for a while I mean these recordings these like interviews these pictures released there was a lot being put out there and now it's his chance to tell his story and I think I don't know I I'm so invested in the situation I've been watching all of the streams I've been watching a lot of Emily D Baker love Emily D Baker and I've been wanting to make this video, but it's taken me a long time to do a lot of research on the back end. So now that I've covered it, now that we're up to date, I'm going to try to do more live coverage if you guys would like that. Uh, but I, I also didn't really have like any, like there weren't any like great videos out there, or maybe there are, I didn't find them, but I couldn't find any really great videos that went through an entire timeline. And I looked at different sources that were pro Johnny, pro Amber. I mean, the first source I really went through was pro Amber. And I think that was helpful because I got to see everything that was on her defense. And then I just filled in the gaps with what, um, what Johnny, like what are, what's pro Johnny. And I think that overall, I tried to tell a comprehensive story here, but it's very complex. And, um, and there are certain things that I, I haven't brought up necessarily because like so the milani makeup situation like there are some things recently that have come out and you know i just feel like honestly i feel like it's weird when you see a makeup company like kind of like comment on a domestic like <laughs> violence situation i'm not trying to be like a stickler here because i do think it's pretty savage that they went to that point but um i don't know i just think that like there is some hard evidence here and maybe the makeup thing is like you know a nice little add-on to to maybe Johnny's side, but at the same time, it's like, there's some serious matter here and um, it's not pretty. I mean, even like the the situation where Johnny like stuck his hand in the paint after and rode all over the walls and didn't seek help after cutting his finger for 24 hours. There's so many layers to the situation. Even as I'm thinking back, I'm like, wow, like that was a part of that story and those pictures are horrific and they will live on but i want to hear what you guys think in the comments below i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in a new video soon bye guys